Leah Kendra Anderson of the Cree Nation was born to parents Gilbert Duke and Sally Anderson and grew up alongside her two sisters and brother in Thompson, Manitoba, Canada. In 2003, when Leah was just six years old, her father was tragically murdered, leaving the family heartbroken. Their mother, Sally, struggled following the loss and fell into addiction. As a result of this, Leah and her siblings entered the foster care system and resided in a number of different foster homes during the years that followed. Leah's maternal aunt, Myra Anderson, and her husband, Wayne, then decided to take the four children into their care, and in 2005, Leah and her siblings moved to the isolated community of God's Lake Narrows, a place in northern Manitoba, so remote that it's only accessible via ice road or the air during the treacherous winter months. Despite having a troubled start in life, Leah was a resilient young woman who always had a positive outlook. She was described as a vibrant 15-year-old who was very proud of her Cree heritage. She was artistic, loved to dance, sing and ice skate, and had even set her sights on attending the University of Winnipeg to study art. She was also very involved in her local community, and according to those who knew her best, she always put others before herself. At one stage, she was even selected to be a youth chief. Her aunt described Leah as full of life and said that all she ever wanted to do was to put a smile on people's faces. Early January of 2013 was bitterly cold in Manitoba and it was Leah's final weekend in God's Lake Narrows before returning to school in Cranberry Portage. At approximately 7.30pm on January 4th, 2013, Leah left her aunt and uncle's home to go ice skating. The 15-year-old schoolgirl had initially made plans to go to the ice rink with some friends. However, they cancelled at the last minute. This didn't deter Leah, however, who decided to go skating anyway by herself. Before leaving home, Leah's aunt, Myra, reminded her to return by the curfew, and Leah acknowledged this before leaving the home. However, tragically, she never returned. One of her school friends actually stopped by the Anderson home shortly afterwards looking for her, but by this time Leah had already left. Her friend waited at the ice rink, but rather oddly, Leah never showed. Her curfew came and went, but her aunt and uncle believed that she had simply decided to stay over at a friend's house. However, they grew increasingly concerned after Leah failed to return by the following morning, and it was rather unusual that she never made contact with them to tell them where she was. This behaviour was highly unusual, and the fact that they hadn't heard from Leah at all since she left the house the previous evening was something of a concern for Myra and Wayne. They and the entire local community went out to search for Leah, despite the heavy snow and treacherous conditions hindering their efforts somewhat. On Sunday the 6th of January, Leah's family heard a report on the radio regarding a body being found by a snowmobile trail on the reserve at around 10am that morning. As a result, the reserve police gathered everyone together for a headcount and there was one person missing, Leah. 
According to reports, Leah was in a horrific state. Her body was badly disfigured, which left authorities to initially conclude that Leah had been attacked by wild dogs or wolves. She was found with her bag alongside her, her skates being found in the spring in nearby bushes once the snow had thawed, both of which were confirmed to have belonged to Leah Anderson by her sister. An autopsy was subsequently conducted, however the medical examiner's findings revealed something much more disturbing. Leah had not been mauled by a wild animal, but she had, in fact, been severely beaten. Defensive wounds were found on her body, meaning that she fought for her life against her attacker. The case was now officially deemed to be a homicide. The toxicology report revealed no drugs or alcohol in Leah's system and, rather interestingly, unidentified male DNA was found on her clothing and remains. It was estimated that Leah had been killed sometime prior to 10pm on January 4th, the perpetrator having dumped her body along the remote snow trail sometime afterwards. The RCMP believed that Leah's killer was from within the local community due to the fact that during that weekend, the ice roads leading into God's Lake Narrows were all closed, giving the killer a prime opportunity to dispose of a body without being seen. Since the RCMP believed that Leah's killer was local, they thought that catching the murderer would be easy. However, after only a few days of investigating, this proved not to be the case. DNA was taken from God's Lake Narrows residents, most of whom gave their DNA voluntarily, but it seemed that the RCMP couldn't tie anyone within the community to this harrowing crime. Without any clues to work with, the RCMP left God's Lake Narrows after a few days, no closer to finding Leah's killer. This was a devastating blow to her family, who were desperate for answers. They believed that the police didn't investigate the case as thoroughly as they should have, especially at the site where Leah's body was found. The snow was notably extremely deep, which may have caused the RCMP to miss crucial pieces of evidence. The Anderson family worry that something vital was missed, or worse still, that there was a cover-up of some description. Despite authorities believing that whoever killed Leah was local, her family wanted the RCMP to look down the avenue that the killer may have been from outside the reservation as well, in order to make sure that all bases were covered. According to numerous sources, it was common practice for people to smuggle alcohol into the reservation, where alcohol was banned, via the snowmobile trails. This suggests that Leah's killer may have had access to a snowmobile, though any tracks that would have been left would have been quickly covered by the heavy snowfall. Following the devastating news that 15-year-old Leah Anderson had been murdered, rumours circulated around the reserve in regards to her final movements on the night she died, and who could have been responsible. Some rumours placed Leah at a house party on the night in question, however the teen girl who held the party denied that Leah had ever been there. Anderson's boyfriend, Max Chubb, had allegedly gone to look for Leah at the party, though he was allegedly refused entry because it was an all-girls party. Max was questioned by police and even took a lie detector test, which he passed, and his home was even searched, but nothing of significance was found. According to the stories of the Unsolved website, Max's brother Stephen was at the centre of another sinister rumour. He had allegedly told an unidentified female that he had killed someone, though he wouldn't identify who. He later told CBC's Connie Walker that he was just joking around. 
Interestingly, Stephen had actually sent Leah a message on Facebook the morning after she disappeared, reading, quote, I hope you didn't tell on us, or something of a similar effect. It came to light that the pair allegedly had a secret relationship, which ended a few months prior to Leah's death. Whether this overlapped with Leah's relationship with Max or not is not clear, nor is it clear why Stephen messaged that exact morning asking Leah not to reveal their relationship, which had ended months prior to her family. This naturally led many to grow suspicious of Stephen. RCMP officers questioned him and administered two lie detector tests, though he did pass both. His DNA was taken in 2019 and was due to be compared to the male DNA found on Leah's remains. However, no further updates in regards to any results have been made public. Stephen himself, however, stated that he wanted the DNA results to clear his name. Police did bring in numerous individuals for questioning following the vicious crime. However, all suspects were eventually ruled out. The RCMP did state, however, that they believed the killer was most likely known to Leah. Regardless of whether the killer was from God's Lake Narrows or was an outsider, nobody has ever been charged with Leah Anderson's murder. Myra Anderson, Leah's aunt, rarely ever gets updates from the RCMP in regards to her niece's death, though they do occasionally post about her on their social media platforms. Very little has been done in this case, and the lack of progress has resulted in a standstill. The extremely slow progress has understandably left Leah's family angry and frustrated. They want the RCMP to do more in order to apprehend Leah's killer. Her loved ones even protested outside of the RCMP headquarters in Winnipeg in April of 2016, wanting something to be done and, more importantly, for justice to be served. The year prior, in 2015, Leah's aunt, Josie Anderson, and her ex-husband, Justin Stevenson, along with Leah's family, organised an annual 800km walk from God's Lake Narrows to Winnipeg to help raise awareness of Leah's case. They didn't want her to be forgotten, her case left on a shelf to gather dust, like so many other missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. They want answers, and for the RCMP to act. Josie told the Stolen Sisters podcast that many people had voiced their opinions about putting Leah's case to rest, but because she was a victim of homicide, Josie believes that justice is desperately needed. These upsetting remarks leave Josie feeling angry, as these individuals don't know how harrowing it is for Leah's family every single day, not knowing what happened to her. Josie told the Stolen Sisters podcast, quote, I will stand for justice for however long it takes. In 2017, it was revealed that a 23-year-old male was arrested in connection to Leah's murder due to, quote, significant new information coming to light. However, the male individual was later released without charge the following day. Despite this, however, this individual, who still remains publicly unidentified, remains a suspect in the case. In 2013, the local community offered a $10,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest and conviction in this case, which now stands at $11,000. According to the RCMP, the investigation into Leah Anderson's murder is ongoing. Who would kill a 15-year-old girl with such brutality, and why? Does the truth lie within the small community of God's Lake Narrows? Does Leah's killer still sit among them? Many believe this is the case. Watts was once believed to be a safe community is now a place where many fear to tread. 
Leah has most certainly not been forgotten by those who loved her the most. Her sister Tiffany gave birth to a baby girl who she named after her sister and has pledged that she will continue to fight for justice for her sister alongside her family. What happened in Leah's final hours remains shrouded in mystery. What happened during the time following her leaving the home whilst walking to the ice rink is unknown. Did she bump into an acquaintance or a seemingly kind stranger with ill intent? What happened leading up to and following Leah's death is sadly something which we will most likely never know. Did she and the perpetrator get into an altercation or was this an unprovoked attack? The sheer brutality of the crime shook the God's Lake Narrows community to its core, but they have never forgotten Leah. Unfortunately, her killer has never been found. All Leah's family wants is answers, and more importantly, justice for a bright, artistic and vibrant 15-year-old who was stolen from this world far too soon.